One thing that the coronavirus has made very apparent is that the ability to provide remote programming is something that is extremely helpful if not necessary. But in this video, I'm going to explain the four biggest limitations of relying on remote services in order to provide audiologic care. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. For years, hearing aid programming and follow-up appointments required a visit to your local hearing clinic. But with all of these strict social distancing recommendations due to the coronavirus pandemic, it has brought to light the need for the ability to do some of these services remotely so you don't have to go into a clinic yourself. Now, I have been providing remote care, otherwise known as teleaudiology, for the past several years inside of my clinic for patients who can't make it into the clinic or who don't want to come into the clinic, and it's great because it's convenient for all parties involved. But some of these direct-to-consumer online hearing aid companies are trying to use this coronavirus pandemic as a way to try to convince you that providing audiologic care remotely is just as good as the care that you would receive inside of a clinic. So as much as I love providing remote hearing care services myself, there are four huge Huge limitations when it comes to providing this type of care and the first big limitation is the inability to get an accurate hearing evaluation remotely. Despite the improvements of online hearing screening, it is still not possible to get a comprehensive or accurate online hearing test due to equipment limitations. I took an online hearing test for one of these direct-to-consumer hearing aid companies, and they had me increase the volume on my headphones to their absolute max. And I can tell you this, if I would have taken that test with my volume cranked all the way up, I'd probably have a noise-induced hearing loss right now. Even if they were able to obtain pure tone air conduction thresholds between 250 hertz and 8,000 hertz, there are still a lot of variables that can negatively impact your overall thresholds. But let's just say that they were able to obtain accurate pure tone air conduction thresholds between 250 hertz and 8,000 hertz. You still can't perform visual otoscopy, which is actually looking inside of your ears to make sure that there's no earwax or a physical obstruction blocking your ear canal. And they don't have the ability to do bone conduction testing. So we really wouldn't know if you have a sensory neural hearing loss, a mixed hearing loss, or a conductive hearing loss. On top of that, if you can't perform word recognition testing to give us an understanding if hearing aids would even be better beneficial for you, then we really can't prescribe hearing aids as the right treatment option. And if you can't be sure that hearing aids are the right treatment option, then you basically have to cross your fingers and hope. The second huge limitation of providing remote hearing aid services is the inability to have real ear measurement performed on your hearing aids when programming them. As of right now, real ear measurement can only be performed inside of a hearing aid clinic due to the expense of the equipment and the professional skills that are required in order to use it correctly. Real ear measurement allows us to verify that your hearing aids have been programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. We do this by inserting a probe microphone tube inside of your ear canals to measure the amount of amplification that your hearing aids are providing at each frequency of your hearing loss. Without performing this critical verification procedure, it is impossible to know if your hearing aids are programmed correctly and is probably the number one reason why receiving hearing aids without any in-office visits leads to suboptimal hearing aid outcomes. Now, if you'd like to learn more about real ear measurement and why it's so important, make sure that you check out my video that I will have linked in the description. The third limitation of remote care is the inability to troubleshoot problems that you're having with your hearing aids. Just last week, I had a remote session with one of my out-of-town patients, and she was having an issue with her left hearing aid. She kept having to increase the volume of that left device over the course of the past several weeks. Well, that's great. We identified that she needed to increase the volume of the hearing aid, but I have no idea whether it's the hearing aid, whether her hearing loss is getting worse, or whether or not there's a physical obstruction inside of her ear canal that I would have to remove. Without having her inside of my clinic to do a diagnostic test on the hearing aids, to perform a hearing evaluation, and to look inside of her ear canals, I have absolutely no idea what the potential cause of this could be. So guess what I had to have her do? That's right, she had to come in and see me so I could identify what the actual problem is. It's not good enough to just, oh, well, you're increasing the volume on your left hearing aid. Here, let me go into the software and increase it for you so you don't have to. 
to. That is not good audiologic care. Now, there are some hearing aid companies that have the ability to perform limited remote diagnostic testing on a hearing device, but in my experience, they are not that accurate. And if that device comes back as checking out normal, then we still need to have that patient come into the clinic so we can ensure that it's normal and so we can see if their hearing has changed or if they have an obstruction inside of their ear canal. And the fourth limitation of remote hearing aid programming is that the necessity of having these remote visits is significantly decreased if you actually had a solid hearing aid fitting sequence. You know, it's like they say, not doing a task the right way at the beginning can lead to more work down the road. So if you've had a really good hearing aid fitting where your hearing care provider has followed best practices, then it ensures that your hearing aids are programmed initially correctly for you, which prevents the need to constantly go back in and make different tweaks and adjustments inside of your hearing aid programming. In order to do these things properly, your hearing care professional needs to follow best practices when testing your hearing, fitting your hearing aids, and programming your hearing aids, all of which can only be done, unfortunately, inside of a hearing clinic. Now, if you want some more information on what best practices are so you can ensure that your hearing care provider is actually giving them to you, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com, where you can print off a best practice checklist and take it into your hearing care provider. At the end of the day, I still love the ability to provide remote programming assistance for my patients, but these significant limitations have made it very apparent to me and my patients that remote care is still not capable of completely replacing in-office care if you want to receive the most out of your hearing aids. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.